Hey guys, today Justin Barrett from Clever Tagline is going to be showing you how to create animated lines inside of HitFilm Pro and Express. This effect doesn't require any add-ons, so I'll let Justin take it away. Welcome back, all you clever people. Justin here with Clever Tagline. Tagline, line, you know, that reminds me of a request that came into the HitFilm crew. People have been asking how to create animated lines in HitFilm, kind of like the ones you're seeing here. Yeah, I was all set to give you my favorite recipe for deep fried cicadas, but, but you know what? Let, let's scrap all that. Let's, let's give the people what they really want and spend some time in HitFilm talking about the many ways you can make animated lines. And better still, let's give you so much stuff that it takes two weeks to cover it all. What do you say? I'm gonna guess you're all screaming, yeah, buddy! So, <clears throat> Let's get started. One of the core techniques we're going to use is based on a tip shared by Jay Haynes of the Film Sansei YouTube channel. And Jay has kindly allowed me to share the process here. Start by making a new composite shot, adding a black plane, then dropping the light sword two point auto effect onto the plane. In the effect, drop the inner glow width to zero, then open the core category, Set the color to white, feather to zero, and stability to 100. Set the hilt and tip position values to zero on both axes, with the tip width also set to zero. You'll see why in a minute. Then twirl open auto scale persistence and uncheck auto scale. Set motion persistence to 3x for now, distortion to zero, and blend to none. Next, add a point layer and name it Drawing Point. Back in the light sword effect, set both the hilt and tip controls to take their position from this point. I'll set some keyframes on the point layer. And we now have a line that draws through the frame and erases itself shortly after. To control how long the line sticks around, adjust the value on the motion persistence property. For example, my earlier setting of 3x means that you can draw for 3 frames before the line begins to erase itself. If you want the line to stay a really long time, crank this value up really high. Though be aware that large values will begin to introduce some lag in the timeline's responsiveness. Looking at the opening shot of the band, the line following the woman's arm swing toward the end of the shot was done using this exact setup. In this case, the motion persistence value was set to 5x, and the point driving the line was manually keyframed to follow her hand. To prevent the line from being seen too soon, I adjusted the active range of the plane layer containing the line effect. You can also sculpt exactly how the line will be shaped. With the Show Motion Path option active for the viewer, select your drawing point layer, and you'll see a collection of tiny squares, each one representing a keyframe on the selected layer. If you select one of those squares, or select a keyframe marker in the timeline, handles will appear that you can use to tweak the movement of the layer through that point, which in turn determines the shape of the drawn line. To break things up a little more, set some keyframes on the hilt width property over time, as I did in this example, which will vary the width of the drawn line. Because the hilt and tip are overlapped, there's no need to mess with both of their values, which is why it's okay to leave the tip width at zero. Something else I did for this example piece, but not for the shots with the band, was to give the line some random jitter. This can create the impression that each frame was drawn freehand, making the effect feel more organic. To do this, add a plane layer to the composite shot where your line is being drawn. Onto that plane, add the fractal noise effect. The only thing I did with this effect was keyframe its seed property to go from zero to a really large number by the end of the shot. The number itself isn't terribly important, but it does need to be large to ensure that there is a strong change between frames. With this done, hide the plane, add a gray layer above it, then add the displacement effect to the plane layer containing the line. Set the source to the gray layer, the horizontal and vertical displacement options to luminance, and then increase the displacement amounts until you're happy with how it looks. In my earlier example, I chose 25 pixels for both. 
If you plan to use this displacement option a lot, I suggest moving the fractal noise plane into its own composite shot, making sure to move the effect with it. Now you can drop that fractal noise comp into any comp that needs displacement, and you won't need the grade layer because you can directly target that comp with a displacement effect. Because we're going to use this modified light sort effect a lot in this series, I recommend saving it as a preset. To do so, select the effect, right click on it, choose Create Preset, then give it a name and tell HitFilm where to save it. I made one earlier called Line Drawing and put it in the 2D Effects folder. Now let's look at how to take this technique up a notch. Before we do that though, I want to make the list of elements in my media tab a little more condensed. To do that, I'm going to change from Preview Mode to List Mode. With that done, let's start in the Accents folder, which contains the smaller accents mostly used in the opening and closing shots. I knew these accents would be used a lot, so I built each one in its own composite shot and made them fairly large so they'd work at various sizes, as you can see with the straight line accent. In this case, there are three light sword line drawing effects on a single plane, all set up like I showed earlier, with each one controlled by a different point layer. I also animated the line thickness over time, though in this case, I set keyframes on the core width property of each effect. Whether you do this or keyframe the hilt width, the end result is pretty much the same. The wavy lines coming from the guitar player were made in the same way. Though instead of keyframing the vertical motion directly on the three drawing point layers, I used a parent point layer to move the three drawing points up and down. For the bass player, I wanted to create some radiating lines as he plucked the strings, so I set aside the light sword for a moment and went with a different approach. I began with a new composite shot, dropped my plane into it, used the fill color effect to make it white, and scaled it to create a horizontal bar. Above that, I added a grade layer, onto which I dropped the polar warp effect, which turned the bar into a circular band. I then reduced the polar warp's range property to 45 to turn the band into a partial arc, and animated the bar moving upwards from the bottom of the frame over 15 frames. Using a manual Bezier keyframe at its highest position to ease it into place. I then dropped this comp into a new comp added my black plane below it and a grade layer above it. On the grade layer, I first added the posterize effect, setting smooth source to 35, colors per channel to 2, and smooth to 0 0.09, which rounded off the hard edges of the arc. Then I added the echo effect, setting echo time to minus 0 0.08, number of echoes to 2, and decay to 0.57, which created a couple of faded echoes shortly behind the original. With the accents finished, I pre-rendered all three, and then it was time to sync them with the video. Because the camera tilts up at the beginning of the shot, I wanted the accents to track with the camera movement. To do this, I used HitFilm's 2D tracking to track the microphone in the center of the frame, and applied the track to a point layer named Track Point. To learn more about tracking in HitFilm, click the card in the upper right corner. I started by syncing the straight line accent to the woman's finger snaps. After finding a frame where a snap begins, I dropped the accent on the timeline on the proper frame, set its blend mode to Add, then moved, rotated, and scaled it into place. I then parented this accent layer to the track point so that it would follow the camera movement. For the next accent, I duplicated the first one, then tweaked its timing, position, and rotation to match the next finger snap. This process was repeated for the final snap, 
and then I began syncing the accents for each of the other musicians, following the same basic process. As a final touch to help ground these accents in the scene a little more, I chose to have the other scene elements obscure them, like the moment in the final shot when the guitar player walks in front of the bass player. This was done by creating a mask on the accent layer to represent the obscuring shape, clicking this icon to invert the mask, activating keyframes on the mask's position, rotation, and path properties, and animating the mask over time. Now let's move on to the animated notes. Like the other accents, each note was made in its own composite shot and created fairly large. Looking at the half note as an example, I've got the custom line drawing effect on a plane, this time with motion persistence set to 50x to ensure that the note stays around long enough. To get the shape the way I wanted it, I used the technique I mentioned earlier to sculpt the point's motion using the on-screen handles available for each keyframe. For the quarter and eighth notes, I also added a second plane layer that had the fill color effect to make it white, and a mask to create the filled center of the note. To expand this center shape, I set keyframes on the expansion property for the mask. Adding the notes to the first and last shots was done similar to adding the other accents. along with setting scale property keyframes after adding them, so they scale up as they're being drawn. I also wanted them to drift up and out of frame in a wavy fashion. To achieve this, I set two position keyframes on each note, one where the note starts, and another 40 frames later with the note outside the frame straight above the first, with the first keyframe set to manual Bezier, so the upward movement has some acceleration. Once all of the notes for a given shot were roughly animated like this, I selected all of the note layers, right-clicked, and chose Make Composite Shot. Inside that nested composite shot, I added a grade layer above the notes, then added the waves effect to this grade. I set amplitude to 6, frequency to 4, and angle to 180. Now as the notes drift up, they move through the wave. The final piece we'll look at in part one is a collection of animated lines radiating across the guitar strings in the third shot. This also uses the light sword effect, though not the way we've been using it so far. In this case, I only turned off the glow, set the core color to white, the hilt and tip width to 10 pixels, and the blend to none. If I turn off the set matte effect on this layer, you can see there are six lines matching the six guitar strings. Each one is a separate light sword effect, and each one has been hand tracked to match the strings. That's the tricky part, but because I knew I'd only be showing the lines for brief moments as the guitarist strummed the strings, I was able to speed up the process just a little. Once I had the lines tracked, it was time to make what would become a matte source for these lines. I made a new composite shot with dimensions set to 2048 by 2048 and the time set to match my other comp length. In this composite shot, I made a new plane with dimensions of 2048 by 150, then added the color gradient effect to it, setting blend to normal, opacity to 100%, and the start and end point properties set with both x values at zero, the y start at negative 75, and the y end at 75 which made the gradient exactly fill the plane. Next I rotated the plane 45 degrees and set its anchor point to 75 on the Y axis. To turn this into a diamond, I added a grade layer at the top of the stack and two reflection effects to this grade, with the angle on the first one set to 90 and the second one set to minus 180. I then copied the video from the other composite shot pasted it into this one, and used that as reference for animating the plane each time the player strummed the strings. I set the first keyframe with the plane at the center of the frame, the second one 11 frames later with the plane a little more than halfway to the upper right corner, then set the keyframes to manual bezier and pulled the handles in slightly. I then copied and pasted these position keyframes, 
to match the timing of the other strumming motions. I also decided that I wanted the gradient to be wider near the center and more narrow at its widest point, so I added scale keyframes to the plane. Back in my main composite shot, I added this comp at the bottom of the stack and turned off its visibility. On the plane containing the lines, I added the set matte effect. Setting the source to my radiating diamond composite shot, matte source to luminance, blend to subtract, and invert checked. I then positioned, rotated, and scaled the diamond comp to match the first strum, with the comp's center roughly in the center of the guitar's sound hole. I then activated keyframes for position and rotation, and roughly tracked the layer to follow the guitar as it moved, again focusing on those few frames when the radiating diamond made the string lines visible. To have the guitarist's hand obscure these lines as he strummed, I began by dropping in another copy of my full plane, placing it below the video footage. I then added a very rough mask, loosely matching the shape of the hand, set its feather property to 10 pixels to soften the edge a bit, and inverted the mask. I placed a grade layer above it, then opened each of the light sort effects and chose this grade layer as the mask source under the core property category. This meant that each line used that mask to cut out the space where the hand was, while the set matte effect drove the visibility of the lines as an entire group. I then keyframed that mask over the course of the shot to match the hand at the key points when it obscured the moving lines. That's where we'll wrap things up for part one of this series. Keep your eyes peeled for part two to see how the other line effects were created, including a technique for rotoscoping that works in both HitFilm Pro and Express. Until next time, Clever Tagline. If you like this tutorial, be sure to subscribe for part two coming later this month. Leave any questions down below, and thanks for watching.